Welcome to an example of an improper integral where we have an infinite interval. We want to determine if the given integral converges or diverges, and if it converges, we want to evaluate the integral. So looking at the integral, notice how the lower limit of integration is negative infinity, and the upper limit of integration is positive infinity. So for a quick review, because we have an infinite interval, on the interval from negative infinity to positive infinity, we're first going to write the integral as two separate integrals by breaking it up using a constant c, any constant between negative infinity and positive infinity. And then once we have these two separate integrals, we'll write them using this limit notation as we see above. And because the domain of our function is all real numbers, Let's go ahead and break this up into two separate integrals using the constant zero. Which means we'll first have the integral from negative infinity to zero plus the integral from zero to positive infinity. And now we're gonna rewrite this using limits. We'll write this first integral as the limit as c approaches negative infinity of the integral from c to zero plus the limit as c approaches positive infinity of the integral from zero to c. Now we'll integrate, then determine the limits. So for the integral of one divided by the quantity one plus x squared, to determine the integral, we'll be using this integral formula here. Notice a would be one and u is just x. So we'll have the limit as c approaches negative infinity of arctangent x, and we still have our limits of integration from c to zero, plus the limit as c approaches positive infinity of arctangent x, and the limits of integration are from zero to c. Which means we'll have the limit as c approaches negative infinity of arctangent zero minus arctangent c plus the limit as c approaches positive infinity of arctangent c minus arctangent zero. And now to find these limits, Notice that arctangent zero is not affected by c, so for arctangent zero, we're looking for an angle that has a tangent function value of zero. So if we look at the graph of the tangent function, notice how the tangent function value is zero, where theta, the angle, is zero. So here we'd have zero minus, now c approaches negative infinity. We're looking for an angle such that the tangent function value would be approaching negative infinity. So again, going back to our graph, notice how the tangent function value is approaching negative infinity as our angle theta is approaching negative pi over two. So we'd have minus negative pi over two plus, now c is approaching positive infinity. So for arctangent c, where c is approaching positive infinity, we're looking for an angle theta such that the tangent function value is now approaching positive infinity. So going back to our graph again of the tangent function, notice the tangent function values are approaching positive infinity when our angle theta is approaching pi over two. So we'd have plus pi over two minus arctangent zero is zero. Notice how this would be a positive pi over two plus positive pi over two which would be two pi over two, or just pi. So because the limit exists and is equal to pi, this is also the value of our definite integral, and therefore we can say the improper integral converges. And also because the integrand, or the function one divided by the quantity one plus x squared, is non-negative on this infinite interval, we can say that the area under this function and above the x-axis, even though it's unbounded, would be equal to pi square units.
I hope you found this explanation helpful.